it's already, it's already rolling. Come on. There are more of you here than it sounded like while I was sitting there facing this way. So uh, if y'all want to get louder than you have been, that's fine with me because I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm with Jerry. I need the encouragement and, and uh, we're, we're good. So how we doing? All right, four of you is doing great, and that's, that's good, and we're glad. We're going to start a new series today called Seeds. Yeah, yeah Seeds. Um, there's a lot in the Bible about seeds. The, uh, you, you don't realize how much there is about a particular subject until you pick it, and then you start looking at it and studying it, and you start seeing it all over the place, and there, it, it's, it's just everywhere. Uh, the, the, you know, one of the one of the great promises that popped out at me was that at the end of the flood, right? You remember Noah's flood? Well, you might not remember it. You weren't there. Unless you're Gary. You might have been there. But, but when, when Noah came out of the ark with his family, Noah gave an offering to the Lord. He burnt an offering before the Lord, an animal sacrifice to the Lord. And, and, the, and the Bible says that God smelled that offering. And when he smelled that offering, he smelled that worship, he smelled that honor that, that came to him. It says, no longer, never again, will I destroy the earth in this way. For there will be seed time and harvest. You know how many times I've read, preached, taught, everything else. The story of Noah and that story and the rainbow and all of that fun stuff. And it never popped off this page at me. Until this time. Because I was thinking about seeds. And he said, and there will be seed time and there will be harvest. And listen, our lives are filled with seed time and harvest. That's the cycle that we run in. That's the cycle that we go in. That there is seed time, there is a time to plant, and there is a time to reap. And it's, listen, here, it's up to us to decide what that reaping, what that harvest is going to look like. And, and it's very important. And there, there, <laughs> Jesus Jesus' life is a life that was lived for our, to be an example to us, to show us what we could, how we could live, how we could experience the fullness of what it means to live in the kingdom filled with the King, filled with the Holy Spirit, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing with the Holy Spirit in us. This is how Jesus lived, and He lived that way to demonstrate for us what it looks like so we could live that way too. We live filled with the Holy Spirit, right? We are, we are being built together to become a dwelling in which He lives by His Spirit in, in Ephesians 2. Right? That's your purpose. Your purpose is to be the temple of the Spirit of God. The place where He lives and dwells and works from and, and operates from. And, and if, when you understand that, that you are the vessel that carries around the power of the, of the living God, of the Spirit of God, you are the one that carries it around and delivers it to the world. Like Cody was talking about, when we let go of the old baggage, of the old garbage that's taking up space in our, in our lives and, and holding us back and weighing us down, and we let go of that, all of a sudden I'm like, Ooh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm free now, I'm a little lighter now, I, I feel a little bolder now, I start to bounce around like Rocky now, I, come on now, right? You start getting a little fired up because all of a sudden that freedom, in Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free so that we don't have to walk around with all of that baggage anymore. We can actually step into life in boldness and in power, experiencing the flow of the Holy Spirit to us and through us. Come on. 
Liam understands that, understands that, right? The gift of God that's given to you is the gift that you get to deliver to the world. It's not yours, it's just through you. You're the mailman. Like, I have never thanked the mailman for a package from Amazon, right? I mean, not that I don't appreciate them delivering it to me, but the package, the present wasn't from them. Right? And, and when we understand that we are the mailmen and the mailwomen of God, that what He's sending to us is coming to us and through us for the sake and the good of those around us, now all of a sudden I, I, get, to, I get to live free. I, I get to live in, in that power, in that strength. And, and, and listen, all of this becomes a way of seed time and harvest. It becomes a way of what, what comes to us we release and, and put it into the ground. We cultivate it. We, we, we make space for it. And we nurture it. We care for it. And, and, and we are careful about it. I grew up on a farm back in Tennessee. So I could go into a whole bunch of farming analogies for you that about three quarters of you would have no idea what I'm talking about. So I'm not even going to bother. But you understand that when we talk about seed, we are talking about potential. Come on. In every acorn, there is the potential of a forest full of oak trees. Come on. One acorn has the potential of not just one tree, <laughs> but of forests of trees. We have seed in our freezer right now. That my grandmother got from her grandmother, who got it from her grandmother, of a particular kind of bean called a greasy bean. A very particular strand of bean. And that seed, listen, that seed has been and probably will stay in our freezer for another 20 years because we're not going to plant it. But the potential is there, right? The potential of growing that same that same green bean that I used to eat on my grandmother's kitchen table 40 years ago is right there in our refrigerator because that seed carries the potential of all of those beans that we ate at my grandma's house. For generations, they've eaten off that same bean. Come on. Okay, let's let's get in the word here. I need to. We're talking about sowing today. We're going to talk about sowing three. This is a three part series. We're going to talk about sowing, growing, and reaping. Today, I want to talk to you about sowing. Jesus in Mark chapter four comes to his disciples. Let me just let me just read it to you. It says, and again. Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he had to get out into a boat and sat and sat in it, sat out in it on the lake while all the people were along the shore and the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables and in his and in his teaching said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he, was scattering, as he was scattering seeds, some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not uh, have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but the soil was shallow. But when, he, but when the sun came out, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell, on, uh, fell among the, for, the thorns, which grew up and choked the plant so that they did not bear again. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, it grew, and it produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some hundreds, a hundred times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. See, he's telling a parable. He's using a parable here to, to teach something. And, and a parable is, it, it's, it's, the, the word is, is it, it's, 
It's a parallel story. It's a parallel fable. You mix those two together, it's a parable, right? And it's a story that's made up, but it parallels a truth. It parallels something deeper that we need to understand, that we need to get a hold of. And and so Jesus teaches this to his disciples, to his followers, but he teaches it in a way that if you don't really, if you're not really tuned in, you're not going to get it. If God is not not helping you understand this, then then if you don't have the mind of Christ, you might not get the the idea that's happening here. You might be like, who cares? Like there's seed and rocks and birds and I don't know what you're talking about, right? But l- l- listen, he goes on. He says, when he, when he was alone, the twelve, his disciples, and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those, in, to those on the outside, everything is said in parables so that and this is from Isaiah, they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing and never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? Now, I just want to be honest with you. That part bothers me. That bother, when, when, I'm study, when I was studying this, this part bothered me a lot, right? Because I'm like, well, wait a minute, Lord. Like, don't you want them to understand? Like, don't you desire that everyone would understand? Like, I can quote verses to you, Lord, that you wrote in your book that says it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should have eternal life. That, that you sent your, your only begotten Son That whosoever believes in Him would not perish but have eternal life. The whosoever covers all of the whosoever's. Right? So so what's what's happening here? And and, and, and as I prayed about this and thought about this, I just felt like God was just saying, listen, here's the thing. You get to decide. You get to choose. You get to choose what kind of sowing you're going to do. You get to choose what kind of seed you're going to be. You get to choose what kind of soil you're going to, you're going, right? Because like, I, I wrestled with this parable, am I the soil or am I the seed or am I the sower? And the answer is yes, you are. You are all the above and more. And you get to decide what it's going to be like. And by your decision, how you decide what it's going to be is what you are going to ultimately produce. Whether you will understand or not understand is really up to you. And it's not about you figuring it out, figuring out the mystery. It's about you being in the place where God can open your mind and reveal to you because you're not stuck in one of these places. Now, Let's talk about these places. Because Jesus then does what is we ought to just thank him for. He now interprets the parable for us. In the next verse, he says, oh, wait, before I get there, I want to I want to do this. Jesus is going to talk about the word. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about what is the word good for? Like, why does it matter if the word is being planted and it's going to reap a harvest? What, what is the harvest? So in 1 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 3, uh, 16 and 17, it says this. All Scripture, all of God's word is God-breathed that comes from Him and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. In other words, it's useful for making us better. Right? For, for making, helping us to move forward and make progress and get stronger and get more powerful and do what God has called us to do. For a reason, verse 17 is the reason. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Because listen, you were created for good works. Right? You were created to do the things of God which are good. Right? Liam said, God is good. That's enough, right? That's theology right there. Drop it, right? Drop the mic on that one because when you understand that God is good all the time, 
It doesn't matter what you're up against. It doesn't matter what's happening. It doesn't matter if you don't completely understand. If you know that God is good, then you can rest. Then you can have that peace. Right? And so it's in that goodness of God that we are thoroughly equipped to do all of the work that He's called us to do. To, to deliver that word like Cody was talking about. To, to speak, uh, to, to, to share our faith, to reach the, the people that are lost and dying and without Christ and without hope. And, and we get to do all of that. We get to serve the, the, the sick and the poor and the downtrodden and whatever it else it is because we have been called according to His plan and we have been equipped by His Word to do everything that He's called us to do. Every good work. So when we understand that, now we go to back to the parable. Jesus says, the farmer sows the Word. The farmer sows the Word. This is the Word of God. This is the truth that will set you free. This is the power that comes from knowing what God has said, what God has done, what God is doing, what God will do, because it all comes from His Word, His revelation, what He has spoken into us and what He is speaking into us now. Come on. Keep your connection. Right? Right? Don't don't be like the old Verizon guy. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? You know, no, no. Keep that connection tight. Because you want to hear what the Lord is speaking to you now. But, but listen, He gave you this so you could recognize His voice now. They work hand in hand. And so it's very important that we understand that. That the farmer that is sowing, what we're going to reap a harvest from is the seed called the Word. The Word of God into our lives. Some people are like seeds along the path where the Word is sown. As soon as, the, as, soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away, takes away the Word that was sown into them. This is spiritual warfare. Come on. When when he used it in a parable, he said the birds came and ate it up. (laughs) You you see, that's what that's what Satan does. That's what the demons do. Is as I'm preaching the word, as these guys are are all up here proclaiming the word of God and and preaching the word. There's a little birdie coming around and trying to grab that out of your ear, right? Think of a a hummingbird coming up to your ear, trying to get in there and get that get that seed of the word out that 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 was just planted in there, so it don't take root so so they want to eat that up as quickly as possible in other words they want you to be as distracted as you can be right they they want you to be all tangled up in everything else that you can and and they want to just come and, and and try to take that away if you don't believe spiritual warfare is real you're not living a spiritual life i'm not judging i'm just i'm just telling you the truth you are living in spiritual warfare you just aren't recognizing it Come on. This is what spiritual warfare looks like. That the devil is trying to take your seed before it takes root. Listen, he he interprets the next one. Others are like seed sown on the rocky places. They hear the word and at once receive it with joy. These are called the flash in the pan Christians. Right? They, They like show up at church and they're like, I didn't know this was all here. I'm going to sign up for Kingdom Kids. And I'm going to get baptized. I'm going, to, I'm going to mow the yard and I'm going to polish the steeple or whatever I need to take. And then you never see them again. Right? I don't, I don't want to sound cynical, but 21 years of being a pastor, you see that sometimes. Verse 17. But since they have no root, They last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the Word, they quickly fall away. Those are scary words to me right there. Because they have no root. Listen, I I, I just want to make a, 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 a plea for 
the local church as God has designed it. There is a reason that you need to be committed to a church. Because you need roots. You need a place to grow down as well as up. Because if you're just growing up and you're not growing down, you're going to fall over quickly. You're going to fall over quickly. The moment that a wind comes in, all of a sudden, boom, your house is destroyed. Because you have no roots. You see, God operates in covenant commitment. He he doesn't want any wishy-washy, well, I'll be with you today, but tomorrow I'm going to jump over here, and then tomorrow I'm going to jump over there, and I'm going to jump over there. And, And listen, that don't work in marriage. That don't work in parenting. That don't work in your job. That does not work in church. It was not meant to. It's never going to. We can delude ourselves and think, oh, I can have it all, right? I can have my cake and eat it too, is what they always say. Listen, quit eating cake. It's bad for you. (laughs) What we need is some roots. What we need is a root system that when the storm comes, we can blow and we can bend, right? It's the ninth beatitude. Blessed are the flexible who have some roots. Because they will not be broken. They will not be knocked over. And when we're able to endure those storm, storms because we have some roots. Now what do roots look like? Roots look like relationships. That's what roots look like. Your number one tap root, that's your relationship with God. All of those other roots that go out and stabilize you, that's your roots with each other. This is why we have a three-pronged purpose as a church connect with God let your tap root go deep into God connecting with him connect with others let your stabilizing roots go out and stabilize you through the relationships that you have with one another and then connect in ministry because from that root system you will grow up and you will produce the fruit that will actually make a difference to the world around you come on That's how it works. That's how this thing, that's how God designed it. Are you hard and shallow? Do you have a hard and shallow heart? Because you get to choose. Listen, a hard and shallow heart doesn't typically happen because we decided to have one. It happens because of things that happen to us and then we respond in that way. Or we allow ourselves to just naturally become that way. Well, you don't know what people did to me and it made me hard. Okay, I get it. Praise the Lord. Because He has said, I can give you, I can take that stone of, that heart of stone and I can replace it with a heart of flesh. And I can make it soft again. Come on, I just feel led right now. Anybody that feels a little, any kind of hardness in your heart, just stand up right now. So anybody that's, a little bit of unforgiveness, a little bit of resentment, a little bit of, a little bit of anger, a little bit of, I, I just wish that I could think differently about this person. I wish that I could just be free from some of this stuff right here. I, I, just, I just don't want this hardness in my heart anymore. I just want to have this soft, supple heart that beats for the things of God and the Word of God that is releasing to me and through me. Yeah, come on. Just, just hold your hands up to the Lord. I just don't, I'm just going to declare it right now. In Jesus' name, I just declare because I know it is the will of God to take that heart of stone and take any stone out of the heart and replace it with a soft heart of flesh, a heart of compassion, a heart of love, a heart of kindness, a heart of gentleness, a heart that beats with the peace of God, that beats with the power of the Holy Spirit flowing to it and through it. We just declare it. We just declare that freedom right now in Jesus' name. Come on, give Him praise. Give Him thanks for that. Absolutely. Come on. Because listen, 
carrying that around is like a cancer. You don't want that in there. You don't want that to be a part of who you are. Because when we can get rid of that, and we can go deep into the soil, we can go down and get some roots and, and, and establish a root system that when the storm comes, we don't just get toppled over and, and blown down because we don't want to have hard and shallow hearts. Come on. He says, still another, like the seed sown among thorns. Oh, I love this one. They hear the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth and the, and the desires of other things come in and choke the, wor- choke the word. They choke the word. Making it unfruitful. This is when we get tangled up in the distractions of the world. Come on. I don't mean to give you a thigh master workout today, but I'm just going to give it another chance. If you're just distracted by the world, if you're just distracted by the things of the world and the noise and the aggravation and the people and the foolishness and whatever, and it's just tangling you all up inside and and, and keeping you from really focusing on what you know you want to go, where you want to go and what you want to be, I just want you to stand up. Just stand up and claim this too. Because listen, you get to decide what kind of seed you are. You get to decide what kind of soil you are. You get to decide what kind of harvest you produce when you let go of these things, when you step into what Jesus... Jesus wouldn't have told these things to us, told us about these things, if He wasn't intending to give them to us. So I just declare right now in Jesus' name the distractions, that the things of this world that tangle us up and get us wound up around the axle, would just be broken off right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that You would help us to focus on You, to fix our eyes on You, the author and perfecter of our faith, the only guide that we need so that we can get where You're going and where You're leading. We just, we just say no, absolutely not to the cares and the distractions of this world. We will care about the things You care about, not the things the world cares about. And by doing that, we will have fruitful lives, not unfruitful lives wasted on things that don't matter. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Claim it. Claim it. This stuff is ours. This stuff is real. (laughs) And we get to decide. We get to decide. Now watch this. He says, and others, like seed, Sown in good soil. Are you the the good seed or are you the good soil? Yep. You're the Word. You You get to embody the Word. You get to be the Word of God because He pours it into you and it becomes a part of you, a part of your DNA. You get to be the soil where it grows up and where it manifests and where it becomes alive. And you get to be the fruit that comes out of it. Listen to what He says. They hear the Word. They hear it. Are you hearing? Do you have ears to hear? They accept it. Are you accepting it? Are you you receiving it? Are you accepting it like the gift that it is? Are you you experiencing what God is pouring out on you? And and listen, and and it produce a crop. And produce a crop like seed sown in good soil. They hear the word. Accept the word. And produce a crop. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 times what was sown. Listen, what God is sowing into you is, is sown into you to multiply. It's sown into you to reproduce. God does not create any ecosystem whatsoever that is not designed to reproduce. An ecosystem that does not reproduce is not an ecosystem that is of God. 
When God plants something, He intends for it to multiply. And what He has planted into you, He intends for it to go out forth from you, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing in multiples over and over and over again. He didn't save you so you could just be one Christian. He saved you so you could share the faith that saved you and save thousands of Christians. Come on. And when we understand that we have all of this given to us, that we have all of this at our fingertips because this is what God has planted in us. It's what He's put into us. We have these seeds of potential that are there and all we need to do is water them and God will make them grow. Come on. Paul said, I I planted the seed. Apollos watered, but God made it grow. And when we understand that God makes it grow, that God makes it multiply, that God makes it flourish, then we can trust in Him. And listen, here's what we become. We become alive and mature, producing a harvest. Is your life alive and mature and producing a harvest? When we become, we we are the church. Listen, I I don't want to speak in a, we are the church that is alive that is mature, and that is producing a harvest. And the, and the more that we live into that, the more that we live into that purpose, that plan, that calling, that desire of God, that function, that design of God Himself, the more satisfied we get to experience who He is and what He's doing. Come on. <laughs> How satisfied are you right now? David said in the Psalms, he says something like this. It won't be an exact quote, but he says something like this. He says, that I, I, I am satisfied when I wake in the morning more like you, Lord. When I am more like God every day, when we get to be more like Jesus every day that we wake up, we just become more like Him. We just live into our inheritance, which is made in the image of God, so that when people look at us, they see Him. That is the image that we're growing into. That's the image that we want to portray to the world. I don't want you to see me. I want you to see Jesus. And when you see Jesus, what will happen is a multi... Listen, the, go all the way back to the, for the beginning of the story. Jesus called His twelve, but a whole bunch of other folks came. So many of those other folks came that they pushed Jesus right off the land into the water. And He had to get in a boat and, and, and push out to water just so that He could get, get some room because these multitudes were coming to Him. See, the Bible says that when He is lifted up, He will draw all people to Himself. Come on. We don't have a growth problem. We have a lifting up problem. We, we, we just need to lift up the Lord. We just need to lift Him up in our lives. Lift Him up in every area that, that, are, that is within us. And become, uh, become that healthy ground. Become that alive and mature place where producing a harvest is just what we do. It's what we do every day. It's just what happens around us. We're, we're going to get into it next week. but I'll, I'll, I'll wait for next week. I already want to do next week, this week. That's, come on. Would y'all stand? Whew. Come on, man. I mean, between... Between Chad and Cody and Jerry and Liam, you've heard at least five good sermons today. You've heard some great worship today. You've been led into the throne room of God to worship and proclaim His name, to lift up the name of Jesus, to remind us of who we are because of whose we are. And it's in that place, it's from that place that we decide that we're going to have soft, supple hearts. That we are going to grow deep roots into Him. That we are going to 
that, we, that we're going to stay there. That we're going to stay and grow and, and mature. And we're not going to let the devil pick it out of our ears. But we're going to take that Word and we're going to plant it deep into our hearts. And we're going to let it come alive and mature and produce a harvest. Come on. Jesus said, look at the fields, man. The harvest is plenty. The workers are few. Well, guess who the workers are? The workers are those who are producing the harvest. Come on. Am I the harvest or am I the field? Am I the worker or am I the seed? Am I the soil? Am I the... Yes! You are! You're all of it! So just hold out your hands before you. It's a posture of receiving. Lord, we just, we just pray, Lord, that You would just plant Your seed deep into us, Lord. Let us hang on every word that You say. Let us just be hungry and thirsty for Your Word and for Your righteousness. Let us seek first the Kingdom of God and all the other things will be added to us when we put You first. When we put You number one and we declare that You matter more than anything else in our lives. And so Lord, we just give it all to You. We just lift it all up to You right now in Jesus' holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday, everybody.